Hello crafters, I'm Flavia and I hope all is well. In today's video, I will show you some note card ideas featuring a few die sets from Spellbinders Beautiful Reefs collection by Suzanne Hugh. I had a lot of fun creating these note cards and I hope you enjoyed this video. Let's begin by taking a closer look at the die sets included in this collection. This first one is the Build a Reef die set with 17 metal plates included to create a basic reef. This is actually the main set in this collection, I believe with these beautiful long branch plates that will allow us to easily and quickly create a wreath base. Then we have the add-on die sets that we can combine with the first set to create note cards for many different occasions, such as this next one, which is the Christmas wreath add-ons die set. With this set, we get to create many great Christmas elements, such as a snowman, poinsettias in two different sizes, Christmas trees, and Christmas ornaments. There are also metal plates included to cut out the sentiments season's greetings. I found these plates to be the perfect size, not too big and not too small, which give us the option to either use these die cut elements to add to a reef that we can create with the first set or not. We could also just use these die cut elements as they are to create beautiful seasonal note cards that don't necessarily have to be a reef. The third set that I have here is the birthday wreath add-ons with 24 metal plates included that will allow us to create wonderful birthday note cards. With this set, we get to create party hats, cupcakes and birthday presents. And again, this is another set with just great basic elements. And the last set that I have to show you is the garden reef add-ons with 27 metal plates included to cut out beautiful branches and flowers so we can make the most out of the build a reef die set. There is also another great add-on set in this collection that I did not get which is the Halloween reef add-on. Since I got lots of Halloween die sets this year, I chose not to get this one, but to be honest, I highly regret it and I might end up buying it at some point just because I love all of the great elements included in each set and I know that I will be using it a lot. Also, aside from this being just an outstanding collection, one small detail that made me love this collection even more is that with each die set, we get metal plates to create different types of bows and they are all so beautiful. I love that now I have a small collection of bow shaped metal plates thanks to this collection. At the moment, I am particularly obsessed with the bow included in the Christmas add-on die set. I really love this one, but honestly, they are all just great options to have. Again, because I did not get the Halloween add-on set, I am missing one bow here, but if you're interested, I will have in the description box down below links to all of products used and mentioned today so you can check it out later. If you're interested in buying these die sets, know that at Spellbinders website we have the option to either buy them separately or in a bundle which is great because we do pay less when we buy sets in a bundle. I will begin by assembling all of the riffs at once and later I will use them to decorate the front panel of my note cards. For this first one, I cut out all of the pieces that I needed using Build a Reef die set. To create the base, I cut 5 long die cut branches. I will create 2 bases using different types of die cut branches and I will stack them because I do prefer a more fuller look, but that is totally optional. Once that is done, I I will go over this reef with a darker color of green ink just to add some shading and proceed to assemble the other die cut pieces such as a golden bowl and the flowers. Since I did not have the color of cardstock that I wanted, for some of these flowers I created my own colored cardstock by tapping a juicy pink ink pad onto a piece of white cardstock scrap. Die sets like this, with small plates included, are great for using up your cardstock scraps. And remember that if you do not have the color that you need, you can create your own by using ink pads like I just did here. As a final touch, I will add a few butterfly sequins to this wreath. Before I adhere each butterfly, I will fold it in half 
just to lift the butterfly wings a little bit to create some dimension. Then I will apply a thin line of liquid adhesive in the center of each sequin butterfly and use a pair of self-lock tweezers to hold it in place as it dries. And here is a closer look at the first completed wreath. Moving on, for this next wreath, I will use metal plates included in the garden wreath add-on die set to cut out these pieces. I will again create the base by using 5 long die cut branches, and then proceed to add the flowers that I die cut out of pink and peach colored cardstock. With this set, we get to create really beautiful blooms. I love that the metal plates not only cut the flowers, but also leave impressions on the cardstock, adding this really beautiful details to each die cut flower. I did not use all of the flowers that I created with this set, but I love all of the options that we get and I would definitely be using these die cut blooms a lot. Here is a closer look at just some of the options for flowers that we get to create with the garden wreath add-on die set. I did have a hard time figuring out the best placement for this bow but in the end, I decided to be safe and adhere it to the top of this wreath right in the center. I was considering adding it to the bottom right, but I will save it for another day. Since I prefer the fuller look, I will again add another layer of branches in the back. I will add one by one this time using strong liquid adhesive. So here is a closer look at the second wreath that I created using the garden wreath add-on die set. For this next one, I will use the Christmas add-on die set. If you have been watching me for a while, you know that Christmas is my favorite holiday, so I was very happy to play with this die set. To create the wreath base for this one, I used metal plates included in the main set. I cut the long branches out of scraps of light blue cardstock and just like I did before, I will stack two types of wreath to create a fuller look. Then I will use this super fun snow marker to add snow to sections of these blue branches. This is a very fun and easy to use marker that I purchased from Amazon. This marker is very inexpensive and it will allow you to add a really cool snow effect to your projects. Before we use this pen, we need to make sure to shake it very well. Then all we have to do is press this felt tip down so the liquid comes out and then hit set it with a heating gun. Nothing special is really going to happen until you hit set it. Once you do that, the heat from the heating gun will make this white liquid puff, which is really cool. Since the white liquid in this marker has the consistency of water and a lot of it comes out at once, I think it is better if we release some of this liquid onto a clean surface instead of doing it directly onto your project to avoid releasing too much at once and risk messing it up. I will apply some of this product to a clean acrylic block and then use the felt tip of this marker to pick it up and little by little add it to sections of my wreath just to be safe. And now I will apply some of this product to a piece of black cardstock and heat set it 
just to give you a better, closer look at the effect that we can create with this marker. To add some shading to this blue poinsettias that I cut out using metal plates included in the set, I will apply a darker shade of blue ink around the edges. This is a great trick for adding dimension to your die cuts and bringing it to the next level. I cut out the centerpieces for these flowers out of holographic cardstock and I did go over the snowman scarf with a shimmer pen to add some sparkle. So let's now assemble the last wreath using the birthday wreath add-ons die set. Always make sure to use a strong liquid adhesive so you don't have to worry too much about them coming apart later. And remember that a pair of self-locked tweezers can be a very helpful tool when assembling small die cuts. So now that we have created our beautiful wreaths, let's work on the card bases. To add some texture, I will be using these three embossing folders by Spellbinders and you can find the names of each one on the top right corner. However, you can use any embossing folder that you might already have. I just happen to choose my new favorite embossing folders. Lately, one of my favorite things to do when dry embossing is to place a folded card base inside an embossing folder so I can add texture to both sides of the note card at once. On one side of the note card, we will have the embossed result and on the other side, the debossed result. I chose the embossed side to be the front of my note cards, but you can use either side since they both look great. If you happen to get cracks and tears on your cardstock when you dry emboss it, one trick to prevent it is to mist the cardstock with water before placing it inside the embossing folder. Usually that does the trick for me. The water will soften the fibers of the cardstock and prevent it from cracking as you dry emboss. 
Rosset. And if my cardstock warps after I dry in Rosset, I will simply place it inside a heavy book on the last few pages and leave it there for about 20 or 30 minutes, as I do other stuff such as assembling die cuts or cleaning up my work surface and putting stuff away. That really solves the problem of warped cardstock and that is why an old school heavy dictionary is a must have in my craft room. After dry embossing my card bases, I will add white panels inside each one to create a nice smooth place to write a personal message later. These note cards are 8 to size top folding and measure 5.5 inches tall by 4.25 inches wide. And these white panels that I'm adding now measure 5.25 by 4 inches. Once this step is done, all that is left to do is to adhere those beautiful riffs and die cut sentiments to the front of each note card. So, after I finish adhering these white panels inside these note cards, I placed all of them inside my old dictionary to eliminate any warping that the dry emboss technique created to make them flat again. In the meantime, I die cut all of the sentiments decorated all of the envelopes and cleaned up the big mess that I had just created which was great because this allowed me to have a clean craft room for the final step. So by the time that I was done with all of that, all of my card bases were flat again and ready for my beautiful wreaths. So here is a closer look at the completed note cards. I added die cuts to the flap of each envelope to make them match. And for the sentiment, I used either sentiment metal plates included in each set or from another wonderful die set by Spellbinders called Serenade Sentiments. To make these die cut sentiments stand out, I stacked four die cut pieces and to make it extra special, I added die cut pieces inside each note card. I really enjoyed playing with the die sets from this collection and I love all of the great basic elements that we get with each one of them. I hope you enjoyed this video and felt inspired. For pictures and more information, make sure to visit my blog. If you're interested, there is a supply list for all products used today in the description box down below. If you create something inspired by this video, make sure to tag me on Instagram. I would love to see what you create. Thank you so much for spending this time with me and I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care and happy crafting!